You're in the heat of combat. As I unleash the fury within, I realize that fear is a weapon. A visceral power that flows through the core of my being. My enemies quiver, their resolve shaken, as they witness the raw, untamed energy that I embody. Let's get feared up! The Fearmonger Barbarian revolves around intimidating enemies, weakening them by reducing their DCs and supporting your allies while standing in the front lines. For your ancestry, you can pick whichever gives you a boost to strength or constitution. Humans and dwarves are great options, and orcs have a powerful array of feats that synergize for this build. We will choose an orc, since they are now common in the remaster. Our heritage is not that important. You can pick the battle ready orc to gain intimidating glare and proficiency in intimidation now, but there will be many other ways to get those. If you want to get spicy, you can choose a mixed heritage. Ask your GM if you can choose uncommon and rare heritages, or what would fit best for the campaign. For this example, we will pick the Hold Scarred Orc, making our character much hardier. For our ancestry feat, we will pick Orc Ferocity, allowing you to hold your ground and keep fighting when the battle turns against you. This also opens up options for later, so keep an eye out for those. For our background, pick any that gives you a boost to strength and constitution as well, but you can get away with a boost to charisma to make you scarier. A warrior gives you a boost to both strength and constitution, and gives you access to intimidating glare if you didn't grab it from your ancestry. But there are other options, like laborer, miner, and anti-tech activist. If your savage mind finds technology distressing, we will choose a tax collector. Our character used to enforce payment for the chieftain. He was feared through their settlement, and made a name for themselves as someone you don't want to mess with, unless you pay the price. This gives us quick coercion and a boost to strength and charisma. Of course, our class will be barbarian. At first level, you choose a class feat and an instinct, the source of your rage. The Fury Instinct is a great option, as you gain an additional feat to start. The Animal Instinct gives you access to powerful unarmed attacks and strong options to support your allies. And the Giant Instinct allows you to wield massive weapons and deal massive damage. Choose the option that best suits you. For this example, we will go for the Giant Instinct. For our feat, we will grab Raging Intimidation. Sudden Charge is also a powerful choice, but we want to focus on Intimidation. And we can't do that while we are blinded by rage and bloodlust. This also grants us intimidating glare for free, and we haven't even started playing. If you're following at home, your stats should look like this. Our four boosts should go to strength, constitution, dexterity, and either wisdom or charisma. At level 2, we gain another class feat and a skill feat. If you didn't pick intimidating glare at character creation from the many options you had, this is a good place to grab it. You can intimidate a creature by looking at them, bypassing language barriers. If you already have it, pick any of the intimidation skill feats. Quick coercion and group coercion are great options to have. And if you can, vicious critique is very funny to use. At this level, we will pick no escape for our class feat. When an opponent tries to move away, you can keep pace and follow behind them. Don't neglect your athletics. Despite focusing on intimidation, the athletics feats offer many options in and out of combat. Grappling, shoving, climbing, and swimming are all powerful tools to have. And since we are the giant instinct, we will have the option to grapple creatures much larger than anybody else. At level 4, you can pick Intimidating Prowess, giving you a boost to intimidation when you use strength rather than charisma to coerce a target. Alternatively, you can pick Terrifying Resistance, to gain a bonus to your saves against the creature's spells when you demoralize them. Around this level, you should keep an eye out for a demon mask. It will give you a plus one to intimidation, and you can cast fear once per day. The spell is alright, but the bonus is what you're after. At level 5, you can grab Defy Death, making you much harder to kill. If you picked toughness along the way, even more so. Your flat checks for dying start at 8, plus your wounded condition. At level 6, 
you can choose giant stature to grow even larger. If you didn't before, you can also pick up acute scent to find invisible or hidden enemies. This is also your first chance at attack of opportunity. At level 7, you have a new skill feat. Battle Cry allows you to demoralize an opponent as a free action when you roll initiative. Now, this sounds really good, but we have a much better option in a few levels. Terrifying Retreat makes them flee, effectively taking them out of combat for a round. And Skeptic's Defense lets you make fun of the silly wizard trying to use mental effects on your brilliant mind, counteracting them using your intimidating prowess. At level 8, you should grab Thrash. This feat allows you to damage enemies that you have grappled without making an attack move, bypassing your multiple attack penalty or a high AC. You can also pick Share Rage, giving an ally all the benefits of being very angry without the limitations. Ideally, you should share your rage with a fighter or a rogue, since it increases melee weapon damage. But a very angry wizard is very funny too. At level 10, you can grab Terrifying Hell. This is the better option I was talking about. For an action, you can demoralize every enemy in a 30 feet radius. At this point, you can upgrade your mask for a mask of a banshee, or a greater demon mask, to get a plus 2 item bonus to intimidation. If somehow you don't want to wear a badass demon mask, the Gorge of Primal Roar also gets you there. But remember, item bonuses don't stack. At level 12, you can take Furious Grab. When you hit a creature, they become grappled too without having to make a check. Just make sure to have a free hand. Or you can become even larger by taking Titan Stature. At level 13, you should pick Incredible Ferocity, allowing you to use Orc Ferocity once per hour. So pretty much every encounter you have in a day. You will be able to surprise your opponents by defying death. Around this level, you can also pick Too Angry to Die. This does conflict a little with Orc Ferocity, as you technically don't stand up from prone, but it gives you an additional comeback when your opponents finally manage to get you down. Also around this level, you can choose Whirlwind Strike. You swing your weapon widely and attack all creatures around you. Combined with your giant instinct feats, you have a massive range, hitting every enemy in a 20 feet radius. You can also take Collateral Thrash, hitting a guy with another guy. At level 15, you should take Scare to Death. Yes, the target has to critically fail two saving throws, but would it really be a fear build without it? For your last few feats, you can pick anything you want, really. Feel free to grab any feats you missed along the way, or any of the higher level feats that suits you most. Archetypes open a variety of options that make this build much stronger and help you create a unique character that aligns specifically with your playstyle. At level 2, you can pick your first archetype. The fighter archetype grants you some powerful options that you should definitely try to fit. You can choose Intimidating Strike, turning your character into a terrifying monster. When you strike a creature, you inflict them with a frightened condition. If you crit, they will be frightened too. Later, you also have access to Dazzling Blow, taking away precious actions from your enemies. And using your intimidation skills to reduce their defenses, it's more likely that you succeed. You also have early access to Attack of Opportunity. And Tactical Reflexes gives you an additional reaction exclusively for Attack of Opportunity. The Champion Archetype gives you access to Auras. If you don't mind being a little nefarious, you can pick Aura of Despair. Enemies within your aura cannot reduce their frightened condition below 1, so once the fear sets in, they cannot get rid of it. The Wrestler archetype gives you more options than just hitting and scaring opponents. Using maneuvers like tripping and grappling, you can play around foes' resistance. And if you also have attack of opportunity, you can force enemies into a terrible situation by tripping them, and hitting them when they try to stand up. If your GM allows free archetypes, you can pick these feats without sacrificing your precious class feats. But you can always sacrifice a few class feats if you feel these options are exactly what you're looking for. And your character is ready! Now all you need is a name. Good enough. 